Hey everybody, Josh here with uh, some epic chain waxing failures. Uh, as you can imagine, our customer service inbox pretty much every day has a handful of people in there who are having issues, problems, questions, concerns around chain waxing. You know, this is still a pretty new technology to most people. And, uh, it, you know, I'd say the vast majority of them are people who are not yet waxing. But uh, we also get a lot from people who are just new to waxing and have a lot of questions. Um, some of them really fascinating. So we are going to go through the most common hot wax uh, chain failures. Is that maybe too harsh? Problems? Issues? Challenges? Okay. One of those. As we've all known, we've covered this a million times. I say the number one is that you're getting short application, single application life. You know, I hot wax my chain, it's lasting 100 miles. I would say 99 out of 100 times, this is improper or no cleaning. You know, we've done a million how to clean your chain videos. We've developed a, uh, the chain stripper and the strip chip and other. I'd still say that probably half of the ones we get are people who just didn't even realize they needed to clean the chain or put their dirty used chain into their wax um, and are now having bad results. So absolutely got to strip the chain, do it to the directions. You know, you can use uh, the uh, Walter White method that we used to teach. You can use Soka Chain Stripper. You can use Strip Chip. All of those work really well. Should easily get you into that 300 to 400 kilometer life expectancy with a, st a standard dip of super secret. If you've done all that correctly and you are having short lifespans, here's some things that we found. Uh, your chain and the coating on that chain uh, can make a big deal. So the black DLC coatings from KMC on their very high end chains, that stuff does not hold wax well at all. You're going to have short lifespan with that coating. We've also found our testing at Purdue, that coating, it's a magical coating in and of itself. It doesn't hold any lubricant very well. And so you have shorter than average, um, actually like less than half uh, of the single application longevity with that coating that you get with any like hard chrome kind of traditional silver coating. The other ones that are really pretty problematic are the rainbow coatings. That's uh, done with a process called PVD, physical vapor deposition. And it, it it's less than half the single application longevity with any lubricant we've tested from dry lubes to oil-based lubes uh, and certainly with wax lubes. But as we've said, wax doesn't do a good job of hiding when it's breaking down. And so people find that with their rainbow coated chains, um, it gets noisy very quickly because the wax is flaking off because the wax just cannot adhere to that rainbow surface. So check that. And then the last one we've actually seen quite a bit of chains getting noisy quickly. Don't buy chain on Amazon. Um, it, the vast majority of it is counterfeit or fake. And I cannot tell you how many counterfeit chains we've seen from customers in the last few years. It's well over a hundred, um, you know, and I mean, these chains wear out super fast. They're noisy. They're really probably not safe. They develop cracks quickly. So go to a reputable bike shop uh, or a reputable online retailer to buy your chain. I know we only buy chain directly from Shimano and directly from SRAM for our Silka pre-wax chains. So don't buy chain off Amazon, eBay, or any other third-party marketplace online. You just don't know what you're going to get. Next one we see uh, that, that can also relate to that short application lifespan is pulling the chain too hot from the wax. If you have a Silka chain waxer, um, you're not going to have this problem because you can set it at the 75 degrees Celsius, which is exactly where you want to pull the chain. If you have a crock pot, uh, you know, all the crock pots we've seen over the years measured, uh, typically crock pot low is 90 to 100, 105 uh, Celsius, depending on the brand and the model. I think they drift with age. I mean, I know my crock pot at home that we don't use for waxing, but for cooking, um, it, it will boil water at on low, so it's obviously over 100 degrees Celsius. Um, you know, it'll even boil, you know, like like soup liquids, which are pretty salty, which have even slightly higher boiling points. So kind of a strange one. Um, you don't know what your crock pot is, right, or how hot it's getting. Crock pot high 
can be in the 150 to 160 Celsius range. Way, way, way too hot. It's That can damage the wax, but also when you pull the chain, that wax is at a lower viscosity and more of it runs out. So uh, if you're getting single application longevities that are short and you're doing everything right, check the temperature of the pot that you're using. Um, that's probably your problem. Don't pull it too hot. Next issue, the opposite of too hot is that you're making a candle. Um, this is one that we see really quite frequently. And I think, you know, when it's the first time you're doing it, you, it's just, you don't think about, it takes a lot of time uh, for the chain to heat soak and come up to the temperature of the wax and, you know, to really get good and penetrated and coated and all the stuff that you want, you need to have that chain in that wax for at least five minutes. You want to jiggle it a little bit to make sure you're letting any air bubbles or anything trapped uh, in there out of it. But if you put it in and pull it out before it comes to wax temperature, you have essentially made a candle. Here's what it looks like, right? You make a candle. Uh, some people, <laughs> we had a customer call and say, I just waxed my chain and I've made a baseball, um, which, you know, was kind of fitting. I'm just a giant mass of wax surrounding this chain. You put it back in, you let it sit for five minutes, everything comes to temp, um, and then when you pull it, it looks how it's supposed to look. So, you know, not, not a huge one, but uh, if you're pulling it and it's just totally coated in, in wax, you're pulling it, um, you're, you're not letting it come up to temperature. The other one is that a lot of people like um, to turn the pot off, and you know, we've recommended this when, back when we were using Instant Pots and uh, uh, slow cookers, you know, turn it off and then pull it right as like a, the wax begins to, to cool. Uh, and you start to get that skin on the top. And sometimes what can happen is the skin forms on the top uh, because it's cooler than the wax beneath. And if you pull the chain through a little bit of skin, it will just kind of wrap and envelop that chain. Um, and essentially, again, make a candle. So if that happens, put it back in, turn it on, swish it around, make sure it's nice and liquidy. Uh, let everything settle out at temperature, pull it and let it drip back in. Don't make a candle. No break-in. This one, um, well, you, you will sense when you break the chain in, but you know, Ollie and the crew at G, uh, GCN, they just did a test at Silverstone Lab. A, a non-broken in, a freshly waxed chain with no break-in uh, was about five watts slower than a factory greased chain uh, in the testing that they were doing. And you know, factory greased chain straight out of the package, actually pretty fast, right? It's, uh, it, you know, that's the best it's ever gonna get. It's pretty much downhill and off to poor performance land after that, um, but you five watts worse. Now, after about 30 minutes of riding, uh, that chain is actually a couple of watts faster than the new factory chain. And of course, as the new factory chain gets dirty and degrades, the wax chain actually maintains uh, its super high efficiency after that. So, you know, if you, uh, if you pull your chain straight from the wax and it's stiff, you know, we really do recommend kind of working the links a little bit to break it in, but then just expect that you're going to need to ride it uh, and ride it, you know, reasonably hard for somewhere in the 20 to 30 minute range uh, to get it fully broken in. So, you know, don't uh, put your freshly waxed chain on right before your time trial or your triathlon or your key event thinking that uh, that's when it's going to be the fastest. It does take right about half an hour um, to do that. flip side of that is if you're doing a very long event uh, that, that you need the longest possible single application longevity, go ahead and do it. You know, if you're not sprinting out of the, you know, if you don't care about a couple of watts, um, you know, straight off the, off the line, then go ahead and start on a non-broken in chain and that will just give you that extra half hour of uh, single application longevity for an event like, you know, an Unbound uh, 300 or Gravel Worlds or Unbound 350 or Gravel Worlds 300, um, you know, you need, you need all the longevity you can get and, and, you know, that chain will really be in its sweet spot kind of right through the middle of your event um, with a strategy like that. So break it in. All right, this next one is a little bit silly. Uh, and when people do it, they oftentimes feel a little bit silly. Um, but you are not alone. We probably see it two to three times a week. So it's not just you. And that is missing the inner cage plate upper tab. 
Okay, when you go to reinstall the chain, this is a really common mistake. Um, you have this rear tab and this upper tab that help just keep the chain, you know, on the pulleys in like extreme impact and, uh, you know, particularly like off-road type situations, but road derailers have them as well. And the chain needs to be routed, you know, under this pulley inside this back tab, comes up the top, and then it slots through the gap between the upper pulley and this tab here. So you have to kind of fish it through that way back and then up over the cassette. Um, it is so easy to get it around this guy and then just put it on the pulley and go, and you can't always even see it. You know, certain derailers, this one, I mean, you can see the tab is actually kind of hidden behind the outer cage plate. So you can't even really see that it's there. Uh, and then the chain, if you get it wrong, doesn't even obviously stick out all that much in front. But what it does do is it jumps over this thing and man, does it make a lot of racket um, and a lot of vibration. And people call, you know, they typically start out by saying, you know, wax is supposed to be quiet and I've never heard my drivetrain this loud. Uh, and they send a video and I'd say nine times out of 10, somebody's missed that tab. So don't feel bad about it. Uh, just give a peek. You know, sometimes you actually have to look from the uh, non, uh, you know, from the non-drive side of the bike to actually see that you've missed it because, again, it's a little bit hidden behind that front cage plate. Um, if you've done it, no big deal. Thank God for quick links. Just pop it, fish it through, and uh, you're fixed. So. Uh, and then the last one we'll cover, and this is, I would say, more of an, well, it's really an issue with Shimano chains more so than any other um, because they are just so highly refined in terms of like the little um, ramps and cutouts and just details in the chain itself. And that is putting the chain on backwards. So if you look at a Shimano chain, which I've got another one right here, um, Shimano chain has writing on the outside of the chain. And that is the outside that you can read it if you are looking at the bike from the drive side. So you want to be able to read the text on the chain when it is installed. Uh, the back side of the chain doesn't have any text or, or uh, you know, embossing in the, the metal at all. And so, um, yeah, you wanna be able to read it. That's not always easy on a freshly waxed chain, you know, especially a wax chain that has a dark additive like the Silka Super Secret. So, you know, sometimes you have to kind of scrape at it a little bit, look a little bit more carefully than you think you might have to to make sure that you're getting uh, you know, getting the chain on the right way. And then along with that, uh, when you are installing the quick link, some of them, the Shimano ones in particular, are directional. And the thing that, with the Shimano ones that confuses people, and it's easy to kind of overthink this, when you install it, because it's the same piece on both sides, they point opposite directions. And so the correct direction is, uh, you want it to point in the direction that the chain operates, when read from the drive side. Okay, so you want, you know, I always do it on the bottom where it's easiest, snap it, and you want it pointing left when you're doing it on the bottom. That means that if you look at it from the other side, uh, it's gonna be pointing right. That doesn't matter. You <laughs> read it from the drive side. So there you go, handful of things. We answer these questions really multiple times per day from customers. They're all, um, you know, simple things that you'll figure out relatively quickly, but maybe getting them out uh, at the front like this will just help you better plan for uh, any issues you may have when it's your first time or maybe your second time or you're new to it. So I know you have more questions because we get tons and tons of them. Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg, but please, uh, after you hit the like and subscribe button, please put your questions and comments below. We love answering these. And every once in a while, we get a really cool, unique wild one that we've never seen before and uh, I'd love to start highlighting some of those on this channel because there's a lot of interesting one-offs out there that we've seen that you know maybe it's not a one-off maybe you've seen it too so let us know what you've seen let us know what questions you have and we'll see you next time